Hi Spring fans and welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. In this installment we're going to take a brief look, uh, actually we're going to revisit the Cloud Foundry Java client. I am perpetually in love with this thing. Um, we looked at it as a raw API a couple of years ago actually, back in 2018. And uh, I just wanted to revisit it because in the interim that Cloud Foundry uh, Java client has since been contributed. Uh, it's now part of Spring Cloud. I actually put it in Spring Cloud. Uh, as auto configuration and it's used to provide a discovery client uh, implementation that discovery client is interesting and uh, you know had we more time or were this a different episode we might even spend some time looking at that <coughs> suffice it to say it works and acts and does all the things that any other discovery client does um, and it's even gotten markedly better since its original creation but we're not going to focus on that episode on, on that in this episode we're going to focus instead on the auto configuration that comes for setting up a Cloud Foundry Java client uh, as part of that. So you can just drag that in and then benefit from the, the auto configuration. And that makes it much easier to write programs that then automate your Cloud Foundry platform. I love Cloud Foundry. Uh, it's one, one of the things I love about it is that it's got a really nice API. You can just do anything you want to do with the platform. You can do it from code. Uh, and it's, it's trivial from a, a Java perspective. So let's say uh, we're going to call this... Um, CFAC, Cloud Foundry Auto Configuration. We're going to create a new application using Java 13 because we can. Uh, and we're just going to bring in the Cloud Foundry Discovery. Right, there it is. Uh, and then Lumbuck, of course, to make things a little easier. And that's it. That's all I need. So we're going to go ahead and hit Generate. Uh, that'll give us a project, which we're going to open up in our IDE as usual. <clears throat> and in this application, we're going to uh, build a simple application that uh, interrogates the platform. In order to use it, though, you need to configure the Cloud Foundry application. Now, there are some properties. So Cloud Foundry, you need to configure spring.cloud.cloudfoundry.url, space, password, username, and org. Okay, These are all things that you'll have. I happen to have them as part of my environment. I have environment variables. So, uh, you know, if I say echo spring cloud cloud foundry uh, space, for example, it says Josh Long. So I've already specified them. I don't need to specify them again, uh, but you will. So just keep that in mind, okay? So spring.cloud dot cloud foundry space and, you know, let's see, okay? Uh, user URL username password org okay like that so uh, once you've got those in your environment somewhere obviously you shouldn't put the uh, the password that should not be in your property file certainly not something you check into github <clears throat> once you've got that then you can just write programs that work with Cloud Foundry so I was trying to think of what would be an interesting thing to do with Cloud Foundry uh, I am logged in already authenticated into this workspace here, uh, and I can see that I've got a lot of different applications running, okay? One of them is a Python-based application, and the other two are Java-based applications, okay? Um, we're gonna ignore this one for now, it's 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 immaterial. In, in Cloud Foundry, you have this concept of a build pack. Build packs are now an open standard. They can be used in Kubernetes, in Heroku, in Cloud Foundry, et cetera, and the idea is very, the idea is very simple. Given an artifact, be it a, so a, a Python code base or a Java code base or a .NET or, or Java artifact, a Java jar or a .NET assembly or a, you know whatever. Given those inputs, create a file system, which then is which is which is then uh, packed into a container uh, and then deployed. So, what do I need to do to run a Spring Boot application today? Well, as you know, it can be pretty trivial to run a Spring Boot app. You just say Java minus jar, but even there. There's a lot that could go wrong. You need a JVM. You need a currently supported, patched, secure version of the JVM. <coughs> so you need all this stuff <coughs> correctly configured in order to be able to use it. So what we're going to do uh, is let the platform do that, right? The platform handles the build packs for us, right? Um, so normally, when you push an application, you say cf push minus p my dot jar my app, right? What I'm saying is push this application called my.jar to the platform and give it a logical name called my app. And then I can see that app 
you know, eventually I'll see it reflected out here. When it gets to the platform, the platform looks at the incoming artifact, my.jar, and it determines that it's a Java uh, application. So it uses the Java build pack, which knows how to run Java build packs. As you can imagine, uh, Heroku and uh, Pivotal and now VMware uh, and um, lots of other people in the in the cloud native world. Uh, and by the way, the uh, build packs um, are now a part of the cloud native foundation, right? The cloud native computing foundation. So build packs are very useful in this space, right? They're very useful because they provide um, uh, the expertise, the operational insight that the Spring team and many others have uh, curated over the years. We know how to run Spring Boot applications. I would say there are very few people that know how to run it better than the Spring team, right? Uh, and so that expertise is baked into the build pack. If you want to run a Spring Boot application, dollars to donuts, we're going to give you the most flexibility uh, by default. One way to get that flexibility is to use um, uh, the build packs that are in the platform. Increasingly, with the new versions of the build packs, you can now run them as a thing that actually gets baked into a container, and you can deploy the container somewhere else. So you can use, for example, the uh, Spring Boot 2.3 uh, native you know, um, uh, Docker image container support. Right? That's neither here nor there. We, we want to talk about is the thing that, you know, uh, uh, is running inside the platform inside of Cloud Foundry. So when I say I've got a build pack, what I'm saying is my application was deployed at a given point in time with the latest build pack. You can pin down the version of the build pack, but it's usually best not to do that because we don't we don't you know the platform isn't going to break compatibility uh, with the apps that might have worked yesterday, um, but it will uh, tend to things like security maintenance, right? So so patches and security and all that kind of stuff. All that gets baked into the latest versions of the build packs and those get refreshed over time and the benefit is that since you're just providing the artifact just providing the jar and the platform vendor is automatically conveyor building automatically conveyor building the um the uh uh build pack to the next version and to the next patch and to all that stuff the build packs have the latest and greatest sort of uh features it's all it's the most secure most uh, operationalizable uh, uh you know way to deploy and manage that application. Unfortunately, we can't do this while your application is running. So in Cloud Foundry, if you want to force the application to get, you know, run through the build build pack factory again, uh, you have to restage it, okay? Um, so you basically, you're telling the platform, hey, you've still got my artifact, go pull down the latest build pack, and then recreate the file system, and then deploy that, right? So basically just, it's as though I'm, pushing the artifact for the first time. The benefit from this is that now suddenly my application is running on the latest and greatest and secured version of the build pack. And of course, with a platform, it's tri it's trivial to say, hey, I want to scale up and run 10 instances. That way I can do rolling redeploys. I can, you know, read I can restage one instance and then, uh, and then another and then another and then another, right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to see how trivial it would be to write an application that does this kind of thing, okay? Um, and we're going to demonstrate it because we've got a Python-based application and we've got to Java application. So let's create an application um, that, uh, uh, well, let's say it restages. Okay, we're going to call it the restager. It's just going to be a spring bean. Uh, we're going to have a at log for j annotation. Okay, and it's just going to be an object that takes a reference to two objects that are automatically configured for you. The Cloud Foundry client and the Cloud Foundry ops objects. These are beans that Spring will automatically configure for you, and you can use them to do interesting things. So I want to say, give me all the applications. I want to filter them, right? So application summary, I want to say, get running instances is greater than, greater than zero. So if the application's already done to zero, then the next time it starts up, it'll automatically pull down the latest uh, things. So I don't need, I need, I don't need to worry about that one, right? But if it's, if there's more than one instance of it, I want to make sure it gets restaged. So uh, check and see if there's more than one instance. If there are, then we need to restage them. Uh, and then we need to determine if they're using the right build pack, right? So uh, we need some business logic here. Private Boolean is valid build pack. String one, string two. Uh, I'm going to say string utils dot has text one, um, one. String utils dot has text two, uh, two. Otherwise, right? So we're going to say if all of that, if if through the process of doing that, we find one that matches the 
parameter, the, the kind of build pack that we're trying to find, let's say Python, then we'll restage that one, okay? So here we are. There's my very simple logic, okay? So I'm going to say filter it again, as dot, um, sorry, is valid build pack, as, uh, what do we want? We want to say, ah, we need to, we need to transform this. We need to say um, flat map. So given the application summary, we want to then say use the client to get the uh, summary out of it. So do, do, do application ID, as.id. And then once we've got that, we want to say get the build pack or the detected build pack. Okay. And so if either one is valid, then we want to uh, actually restart it. Okay. So here we're going to go to the platform and we're going to say client dot applications v2 dot restage. Let's just do something simple to prove it's working, right? Actually, we can actually use the ops one as well here. So dot restart, restage, uh, or just stop, right? No, thanks, Siri. Thank you. So we can say stop dot builder name as dot get name. Uh, and then we subscribe, right? So we're just going to go through each one. Um, I'm going to put a little log right here. So, uh, okay, as log.info stopping as dot get name. Good. So I'm going to visit each one, see if it's got more than one instance, see if the build packs that are associated with that application match what I'm looking for, and then I'm going to log out the fact that I found one, and, then, and I'm about to re I'm about to stop it in this case, uh, and then finally I'm going to actually go ahead and do it, right? And I'll subscribe to the whole pipeline. So let's see what we got here. Okay, restart. So we're looking for Python. I told you already. There's one Python app, right? Oops! It started and because it's reactive, and there's nothing else keeping the thread open. It exited immediately. So let me just uh, add this. Run that again. Okay, stopping this, and uh, that's basically it. That's the whole pro program. So CFA, you can see that this application is now stopped. So let's restart that one. Okay, now we can also try with Java. Let's see what that gives us. Restart the application. Oh, what is that? What is the difference that we're getting there, huh? One, two. Okay. Ah. Ah, oh, it's got it's got this in it. So I needed to detect that it has that, right? So actually, the test might have been better using that. <laughs> um, so try that again. OK, so it says stopping sample app 1, stopping sample app 2, etc. So. There you go. They're, the Java apps have been stopped. So let's go ahead and restart everything now. CF uh, start. CF start two. And there we go. The application's up and running. Uh, we're off to the races. We've got everything we need. Now, the application's up and running. Um, and uh, it, uh, you know, the applications will be working fine. Let's change it back to Python. And let's now change this to be 
restage. Because remember, the goal at the outset here was to restage things, right? Here I'm just demonstrating that it stopped. We can actually see stopping. You know, we can see that it stopped. So we know that it, that's worked and we, it's good for a demo. But restaging is what we wanted, right? So we say restage and restage, restart, I want to restage. Okay. Name, good name. Now, get rid of this. Okay, there's the whole thing. So now, I want to restage in. And again, the reason you might do this is because you know that you have apps that are running against an insecure version of, uh, you know, whatever. You maybe you need a security update or you need a whatever. And the Java build pack does a whole bunch of other stuff. It doesn't actually just run Java minus jar. It actually calculates memory for you. It calculates the right settings. It knows how to run server applications versus desktop applications. Downloads open JDK, ensures you have the latest patched version of that, all that stuff. So it's nice to have something that'll do this for you automatically. The best, the irony of ironies is that you can actually deploy this, uh, this application as a, as a task on Cloud Foundry. And then you could have Another, another Cloud Foundry Java client that then invokes that task on a periodic basis, right? Or you could have it as a scheduled job in Cloud Foundry, and it could just do an inventory of all the apps in a given uh, space and uh, restart it. This kind of stuff, I love. I love this kind of stuff because I, the, if the platform is, is code, then you can fix it, right? You can fix what, what you can write. So, um, uh, and it's trivial. I, I've just done simple stuff here, but you can actually use this API to deploy new applications, to, uh, to bind them to services, to, to do all sorts of things uh, for your pipeline. So if you want to, like, code your deployment pipeline, you know, I just did that in 47 lines of code, and uh, it was not hard to understand, right? If you did it in Kotlin, it would have been even more trivial, um, or Groovy, or Scala, or whatever. All right, my friends. Uh, with that, I hope you learned something. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, the... Uh, the auto configuration makes working with Cloud Foundry an absolute breeze. It's really nice to see that. Um, so I'm excited by the possibilities. I wrote a book called Cloud Native Java, and all of the um, tests involved, you know, eventually involved an end-to-end -end suite of deployments, and it used the old version of the Cloud Foundry API. Uh, boy, do I wish I had access to this auto configuration now, right? This makes it so much easier to do interesting things with the platform. Uh, oh, well, maybe I'll have to write a second... Uh, revise that book. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.